we're an animal welfare charity um, that's supporting other animal welfare charities all over the world. Um, we've got about 400 different charities and they're ranging from things like dog shelters, maybe in Romania, up to elephant orphanages in Zambia, for example. So it's complete range. So, uh, it started by a vet called Luke Gamble. He's so, still very heavily involved in it, isn't he? He is, yes. Yep. So he's the founder and also CEO. Um, and we also use him a lot of the time. He's actively involved in the charity, and particularly going out to do a lot of our emergency work um, where we're going to various countries. So we get him involved quite a lot. I was actually an IT project manager um, many years ago, about 10 years ago. Um, but uh, that didn't really agree with me too well. So I decided to sign up for a three-month conservation project, um, which is going out to Zambia. Now, that was back in, I think, 2001. Um, so I went to Zambia for three years um, and stayed for how many? I ended up staying for eight years <laughs> I'm sorry I went for three months and stayed for eight years so um, basically it was quite an addictive country Africa and uh, after the conservation project I started working for a wildlife sanctuary um, during that time we rescued a little baby elephant and the aim was always to release that elephant back into the wild so I set up that project um, with a colleague and during setting up that we ended up rescuing three more little baby elephants so suddenly we needed rather than a release program it was an elephant orphanage um, and that orphanage is still going really strong now. So um, during when Luke came over to film the Sky Vet Adventure series, he actually came to the orphanage and that's how I got involved with WVS. WVS has three main areas that we focus on. Um, the first is with our charities that we support, we send them veterinary teams. Now these teams can be doing everything from running a rabies campaign up to doing an emergency response where they're actually helping um, with a particular animal or a number of cases or might be a disease outbreak or something like that they go across for. Um, second area is we help with veterinary supplies. Now we're very kindly donated by pharmaceutical companies and local veterinary practices um, and, and international veterinary practices that give us supplies that we can actually send across and it's particularly uh, charities in developing countries where veterinary supplies are either very very expensive or they can't even get them in the country. Mm. So we help them with those um, and then thirdly is our it's a kind of an emergency response that we have where if we have a veterinary practice or sorry a veterinary charity that has a particular case with an animal that they either can't get a vet or they don't know quite what to do with it they can give us a call we can get one of our vets to actually get on the phone to them and help them out with that case um, and then in, in emergency cases we send over a veterinary team to help them out so we're working with a whole load of charities in india um, doing training for both vets and also the veterinary, uh, sorry, the animal welfare workers. And it's particularly focusing around, we've run rabies campaigns, how to run an effective rabies campaign, um, how to set it up with uh, in the local area, and then all the way through the veterinary side on how to actually um, give the jabs, make sure we're doing it at the right timings. But then also on controlling the street dog population, uh, which is pretty big in India and, and in all over it's widespread. Um, now with that, it's lots of spay neuter campaigns. And again, it's how to run the campaigns, how to, uh, with the vets, how they're actually gonna do spay neutering effectively and safely for the animals. If we can actually um, stop an outbreak of rabies happening, and it, it is an effective way of doing this by running rabies vaccination mm -hmm. campaigns, and it's been proven there's certain areas now where there is no rabies in that area. Um, and so we've got to start small. We're starting in small locations and gradually building, and building, and building. And what we are doing is working with other local uh, animal welfare organisations throughout the whole of India, working together so that we can get a cheaper vaccination um, by buying it together, which we've now managed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we can actually do a coordinated response and everything's logged onto our website. We can see exactly who's doing what. Um, and we've now got a complete database of what rabies vaccinations have been given across the whole country. Uh, we've got a lot of work uh, being done in, in Africa as well as India. Um, and we do a lot of things, again, they're quite similar to India in a way, lots of spay neuter campaigns, rabies uh, campaigns in Africa. Um, the other big one, which is, is still India, but we've just launched an appeal, which is we're working with donkeys in India. The ones where we are, um, there's absolutely no vets in the area whatsoever. And they do a lot of practices, which uh, to us would seem quite barbaric, mm, but to them, they inhumane. don't know better. Yeah. Mm. So things like they actually cut the nostrils mm. um, in, in an aim for the donkeys to breathe more easily. When they're injured, they do things like get a hot iron brand and start branding them, Ugh. which just generally gets infected mm. and cause more trouble. Um, but what we've been able to do now as part of our courses we're running is part of that course is they do regular clinics down with the donkeys, working with the people, help the donkeys in the most need. But what's important is that we keep the donkeys as fit and healthy as possible, which at the end of the day helps the guys out who are, are working mm. them, um, but also makes sure that the donkeys are not overworked um, and they do have treatment when they are injured or, or you know, in pain. 
when when all the troubles happened in Egypt, uh, we actually sent a veterinary team over. What was happening? You now Egypt's got a few underlying problems with animal welfare anyway. Mm. Um, we've never, you know, and so there's a lot never of work got on to top be done. of that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But what happened was you had animal shelters, particularly dog shelters, where everybody was leaving, fleeing from Egypt, and anybody that owned a dog was then giving it to the dog shelters. Mm. So you now had dog shelters that maybe could look after, say, 50 dogs that were now inundated with like 500. Um, and without all the shops were closed, how do you get veterinary supplies? Mm. Uh, the vets weren't working. So what do you do? So we actually were sending teams over for a couple of months. We had a few international organizations that backed us. We were sending veterinary teams to help out to deal with the worst cases. Um, and again, education was involved as well in helping the guys on the ground in how best to control things like tick and fleas that were then rife, um, any diseases throughout the shelters. So we're still working with them. It's, it's, uh, and what we try to do is any project is we do set it up as a long-term partnership. For another good example is the earthquake in Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, now, what we had to be very careful of, we can't go sending in a veterinary team directly after it's happened because there's all the people that are still struggling and mm. still trying to be saved. And it's not going to look particularly good if you have a, a veterinary team, you know, trying to save cats and dogs when you've got people that are dying. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do with those situations is normally the vet teams that we send are actually helping the people and it's the working animals or the livestock. Because at the end of the day, if you can get all the cows and all the sheep and all the goats and everything that they depend on fit and healthy and back into the food chain, you're actually helping all the people in that area. Each year, we probably send about um, 60 teams of veterinary teams that are going to various charities. Now, each charity doesn't necessarily need a veterinary team. They might be phoning us, um, logged with us just because they need veterinary supplies. Um, I think in the last, ever since we established the charity in 2003, uh, we've sent over a million pounds worth of veterinary supplies out. Mm -hmm. um, and last year it was about a quarter of a million, about 250,000 pounds worth of supplies left. We do have um, a lot of projects that need non-vets as well. For example, we've got bear sanctuaries, um, with a lot of wildlife projects actually, um, that need people just helping out. We need all the dog shelters, um, they need vets, but they also need people to actually walk the dogs, uh, to look after them, to feed them. Uh, we've got a fantastic project in Grenada, which is actually looking after endangered turtles. Um, that are looking after their eggs, making sure people aren't poaching the eggs and looking after the turtles. A lot of the time it's you cover the cost of your flight and everything else is included. Um, some of the charities you're visiting, there's a small cost to cover things like maybe admin or accommodation. Um, we don't take a fee whatsoever, so you mm -hmm. don't pay WVS any money. The only thing we take is that you have to become a member, which as I said was £3 uh, each month. Um, and then when you're in the country, again, depending on the project, I mean, that's it's. You can have a fantastic experience mm. for for the cost of a flight. Basically, we actually organise uh, quite a few sponsored events each year. Although a lot of those are quite local, um, but there's several ways that people can get involved. The first is we actually collect stamps, um, coins, foreign money, uh, even old mobile phones. You can send them into our office, and again, our address is on the website. And uh, we'll actually get money from that uh, by various companies that help us with that. So that's a nice, easy way that anybody can get involved in. Um, you can also go on the website and see various uh, challenge events. Now these are for people that kind of want to do something a bit more energetic. A good example is we had a vet who was climbing Mount Everest uh, last year, which is an amazing challenge to actually do. And she raised um, over a thousand pounds for us by doing that. Um, anybody that does raise money for us, uh, we'll try and back you as much as we can. Things like give you t-shirts, we can get uh, promotional material, and we'll also advertise that throughout our, our website and social media at the same time. You can become a member of WVS, uh, which is only £3 a month, and we've got about 2,000 members at the moment. Now, a lot of those are vets and vet nurses um, because we do a lot of voluntary trips where they can actually get involved and help the charities. Um, one of the things to do that is they need to become a member, uh, which obviously helps us out at the same time. But um, anyone become a member, um, you get to get into new areas of the website by doing that. So, and that, that's kind of the core baseline of, of our funding. 